Hi there guys, today I'm gonna do a bonus review of the Whispers of the Old Gods set. We know now all the cards and uh, I'm gonna go and review the best ones and the most controversial ones, the ones that I think will impact the meta and I'll give my opinion also on the cards that people think will impact the meta but I don't think so. And um, we can talk a bit about the expansion overall. Um, I'm gonna start with the 71 cards that we knew until today and then I'm gonna go on this thing that shows the rest of the cards. I'm gonna talk only about the important cards I said. So we have Druid here. This card is bad. Um, I think this card can have potential to be really good because worst case scenario it's a Yeti. So Yeti was played before in Druid. I think this card is good but your Cthulhu having 10 attack will probably not happen until turn 4. So that means that if you want to play this on turn 4, it will be a 4 or 5. If you want to play it later, it will be a 4 or 10. How good is a 4 or 10 on like a later turn? It really depends on the consistency of your deck and what you can curve out with. Like if you can combine this plus another Cthulhu buff card or maybe a spell, then it's a really good trade. Like maybe on turn 6, you'll be able to have 10 attack on Cthulhu and then. Um, you can play this plus a Wrath. That's a really good deal, I would, I would say. Uh, I think it's a really well designed card and it will probably see playing Cthulhu Druid X. And I think Druid is one of the classes that will be able to hold Cthulhu guards. My Keeper is a really good card. Like, this card is nuts. Summoning a Tutu Slime or gaining a Empty Mana Crystal. So it basically has like either Wild Growth plus a Free Free Body for 4 mana. So that's like already kind of like a 2 mana 3 free, which is nuts. So this card is like either really good or you can summon a 2-2. Two, two, and 2-2 um, two, two plus 3-3 three, three is really good for 4 mana. It's um, a bit better than the Silver Hand Knight, I think. It's like a, the 5 mana card that summons a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2. Two, two. But uh, why I like this card more is because of the Wild Growth effect. Like you'll, pro you'll probably play it for the Wild Growth effect most of the time. Uh, distributing the bodies in a 3-3 and in a 2-2 is probably not the best thing you can do. The 2-2 is a very bad body, 3-3 three, three is like okay-ish. Um, I think this card will see a lot of play in uh, Ram Druid X. It's probably better than Darnassus because late game you can just make a big uh, stat pile. But in the early game you can like also like just curve out very nicely into your towns. Another strong Druid card. Um, 6 mana, 5, 7 taunt gives your Cthulhu plus 3 plus 3. That's really good for the Cthulhu decks. Uh, comparing this to Druid of the Claw and to Ancient of War is kind of something in the middle. One more attack and one more health compared to Druid of the Claw for one more mana, but also buffs your Cthulhu. I think it's a really good card. 7 HP is also like a really good HP. Like, we know already that Druid of the Claw is kind of like pretty hard to kill sometimes. Like, you need to hit it twice. And uh, so many times we barely kill a Druid of the Claw dealing 6 damage and if it would have 7 it would be like way harder to kill. But this card costs 1 more mana so it will hit the board a bit later. I still think it's gonna see a lot of play. So already like really good quality cards. Give a minion plus 2 plus 2 if it's a beast draw card. Um, this card seems really good. Like drawing a card is usually costed at 1.5 mana. And giving a minion plus two plus two is like also one point something mana. It's like one point five mana two probably. That's how that's what I would say. So if you manage to buff a beast, then you get a lot of value out of a two mana card. You get like three mana and a bit worth of value. Keep in mind that, that plus two plus two usually is gonna have charge. So like plus two plus two charge is kind of like half of blessing of kings. So it's not really... Eh. It's, it's gonna be a really good card, but it depends on the amount of beasts. I didn't really take a close look at how many beasts are there. I'm not sure if uh, Beast Druid is playable, but if Beast Druid is gonna be playable, this card is definitely gonna be really good. Hunter. Um, people were constantly saying that uh, this card is like gonna be insane. And until today, I thought that this card is gonna be just mediocre. But uh, seeing the new Hunter cards, which have Death Rattles, then I changed my opinion. 
Um, for 5 mana, you would usually want a 6 6 body. A 6 5 for 5 mana is like pretty good on its own, like a really solid body. And it's not even glass cannon. Like the glass cannon minions are usually the ones that have 4 HP. At 5, it's already past that point. And having 6 attack can deal very efficiently with some taunts. Um, triggering the death rattles is a pretty good effect. And you can play it on curve uh, after the 4 mana hunter minion that they just got today. So I really think it will see play in this kind of decks. It's a legendary, so it will not be that strong. It's class specific, so it's a really nice card and it might make a hunter playable. Um, I mean, this probably will make hunter playable, but we'll get to this later. This, not gonna talk about this, is pretty weak. Uh, Call of the Wild, in my opinion, I'm gonna just uh, give a very strong opinion. I think it's the Dr. Boom of the set. Like, I think this card is probably the strongest or top three strongest cards in the set. It will definitely make Hunter playable on its own. And um, if you play it, you usually win the game. Because you get a Taunt, which is not really relevant all the time, but sometimes it helps. You get a 5 to Huffer with Charge. So it's like just 5 damage on its own, in case you need a damage. And then Leoc, that also buffs your other minions. This guy is absolutely nuts. Like, if there's gonna be a mid-range Hunter deck, you're gonna play this twice for sure. And it's gonna be kind of like better than Ragnaros, if you, if you think in that aspect. It's gonna be nuts. I'm super excited to play this kind of Hunter deck. Already having the Princess Huhuran and uh, the Call of the Wild um, makes me interested in Hunter decks. We'll get to some other Hunter cards later that were revealed today. The, those are, were actually like the, the groundbreakers. Because Hunter needed some early game cards, which they didn't like seem to have. Um, yeah, okay. Nah. Okay, this is a very problematic card. Like, if this card would be good, it would be a very big problem for Hearthstone. Because I think these cards of, these kind of cards uh, are very bad for an competitive play for esports. And, uh, oh, this card seems playable. I hope it will be bad, but I'm not sure how many people are willing to take the risk of this card. Like, it's one of those cards that people might just decide to play it, just to YOLO. Like, players that go into a tournament and don't really expect to win the tournament, they can just play these kind of cards. But this is, like, probably the most RNG-heavy card of the set, because it has very impactful and bad RNG. But let's just hope it will not see play. It's very hard to predict this kind of cards with like random, random, random. But let's hope it's gonna be bad. Demented Frostcaller, I think, is also gonna be a really good card. Uh, after you cast a spell, it freezes a random enemy character that has not been already frozen. So it works really well with Water Elementals. I, I think it's gonna see play as a one off type of card in Tempo Mage. It's not really good enough to play two off, but it's definitely good enough to play one off because. You can play it on turn 5 after you have played Water Elemental with a 1 mana spell, which is going to be quite a common situation if you draw this card, because you're only, you only probably want to run one of those, and then run two Water Elementals. So if you draw Water Elemental and this card, you probably have a 1 mana spell because you run like 6 or 7 of those. Um, another situation is if you draw this and you have Sorcerer's Apprentice on the board, which can be common, um, you just play this and play a zero mana spell and start uh, freezing your opponents and maybe dealing flame waker damage. I think Tempo Mage is going to be one of the better decks of the format. Another card that will help Tempo Mage is Faceless Summoner that summons a random frequency minion. This kind of it looks like the Shredder for Mage, but a bit more expensive. It's a super strong card stats wise. Uh, to analyze it more properly, 5 5 is usually. Like, you'd always play a 4 mana 5-5 five five in most of the decks, most of the decks, not every deck. Um, so let's say 5-5, five five, the body of this card is 4 mana, and then you have, you pay 2 more mana for a random 3, three, three mana minion, 3 cost minion. So like, if you take all the 3 cost minions, you'd probably play, you'd probably pay 2 mana for the worst one. I don't know what is the worst one, but he's probably worth more than 2, two mana worth of stats, or at least 2 mana. So then, that makes this card really strong. Like, in the worst case scenario, it's a decent card. In the best case scenario, it can give you, like, an Injured Blade Master, or, um... There were some other cards that are really, really strong with this. Um, it might be groundbreaking, but... I think it has, like, more controlled RNG, since you see it played on turn 6, 
and just gives you like a pile of stats. So it will definitely see playing like a tempo mage that wants to get the pile of stats on turn six. So you basically just fight for the board and on turn six you play this pile of stats and then on turn seven maybe do some flame waker stuff. I think it's a good card, like insanely good card, not not good card. Uh, three mana deal one damage to all the enemy minions. Uh, this card has like an um, the area of effect spell that is like two mana and does the same thing attached to it. Seems really good to me. Like it has a two mana spell attached to it. So it's ba you basically play one mana for a 2-2. Two -two. That's really good. So I expect this to see playing Tempo Mage if the meta is relying on a lot of 1-1s. One and uh, as we saw until now, most of the early drops have 1 HP. They're like very glass cannon minions. Like even the Death Rattles or the minions that spawn other minions have 1 HP. Like I will show you, like most of them do have 1 HP. So I think cards like Arcane Missiles or maybe these cards are gonna be pretty good. You might play this and not play missiles or play only one missiles and like play, uh, use the one mana spells to have the Arcane Blast, which is gonna be really strong with uh, Azure Drake still being a really good five drop. You will probably still play Azure Drake in Temple Mage over Server until your Siren unless you feel super lucky because Azure Drake is just a consistent overall card. But I think this, this, and maybe this will see play in Tempo Mage. And Tempo Mage, I, I expect it to be really good. Because at the moment, it's one of the few counters to face Shaman. Uh, alongside with Page and Warrior and stuff. And since we're probably not going to have Page and Warrior anymore. We'll get to that later. I think Tempo Mage might be one of the things that can be used to stop um, Shaman. Also, the biggest counter to Tempo Mage, or one of the biggest counters to Tempo Mage, Zoo, disappears from the meta. And Tempo Mage only loses... Uh, Med Scientist, which was played in most of the decks, but I saw a lot of good Tempo Mage decks that don't run Secrets or Med Scientist because it might be inconsistent at points. We're see. We're gonna see. I'm gonna talk about like the meta overall later and how I think it's gonna shape. Uh, going to the Paladin cards, I think this is gonna be a really good card, just solid in a style Paladin, and Control Paladin might become a thing. Um, this is not really that good, right? Yeah. Um... Mm. This is an interesting card. Might see play as a one-off in Control Paladin decks because it heals for twice the amount you spend. So if you spend like 10 mana, you can heal for 20. But the problem is that you cannot control how much you want to spend. It just spends all your mana. So the way to control it is to use it with, in combination with other cards at the end of your turn. I think it's going to see play as a one-off if it's going to see play. It's a decent card. It's probably one of the better zero mana cards that we have. Probably the best one. Uh, Steward of Darshire. Whenever you summon a one health minion, give it Divine Shield. We have a lot of one health minions, and uh, I like this card a lot because the summon part means not just play from the hand, it means like summon through any mean. So if we manage to find a very aggressive deck with Divine Favor, this card is gonna fit in for sure. It might even spawn an R type on its own. It's gonna demolish Wild by playing this and Master. And um, for how strong it is, as an effect, it has a pretty good stat line. 3 mana, 3 free is okay. It might survive until turn 4. <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay, this card is bad. I'm not going to talk about bad cards. Um, this card might be okay. I don't play Priest that much, but Priest seems pretty... These cards that Priest got here seem pretty weak, but they got some better ones today. The thing with Priest is that it's very hard to balance because its core set can become super broken if they give some good cards to Priest. Like Priest is like very close to being super broken. And I think in the standard, when most of the Priest counters disappear, it might actually see more competitive play, but we're gonna touch on that later. Uh, we have Xaril. I think it's a really strong card in a control-oriented meta. In an aggressive meta, it's a bad card. This card is a very hard card to evaluate, but I think it's good overall in some Maligos Rogue. People are talking about like some insane situations that will probably never happen. Like I don't think you'll ever get to play this on your Maligos, but I think you'll get to play it on your SI or on your Van Cleef, or maybe even on your Azur Drake a couple times, and then you can make some nifty combos with it. May, at least as a one-off, maybe in Maligos uh, type of decks, maybe even on the um, Auctioneer, but 
that's again like if auctioneer survives on turn or if Maligo survives on turn you probably already win okay this card is is not really on the level of dark peddler and i don't think rogue can use a two mana card that efficiently because rogue on two mana they always want to hero power so i don't think it will see play but if it was for another class it would be a really good card like just getting a random class card is not that bad like you basically draw a card so it's like a better novice engineer it's like a two mana a two two novice engineer it would be insane and you don't draw from your own deck but you draw from your opponent's class which is pretty good because they don't know what card to expect it would be really good in another class rogues probably not uh, this card has potential to be insane in Control Shaman, but we are going to touch on Shaman later and why I think people are going to play mostly Agro Shaman and not Control Shaman. But I think Shaman is going to be Tier 1 and uh, most of the Shaman archetypes are going to see play unless people figure out really, really good counters. Like, people are going to expect Shaman and, like, Shaman is going to be strong, probably. Let's just look at the cards and we talk about the meta afterwards. Summon a 4-2 Elemental, it's an okay card, but Shaman has so many strong cards and they usually want to play Doomhammer on 5, which is like the most, probably, in my opinion, overpowered weapon in the game at the moment without Deathbite uh, anymore. So, since Doomhammer exists, this will probably not see play. Um, again, another card for Control Shaman that is pretty good, but Shaman has so many cards that I'm not sure if this is going to see play. Like, you don't even want to totem up, you have so many other things you can do, but you might, you, this might see play. Master of Evolution is again one of the strongest cards in the set, top 3 strongest cards in the set. It's basically Yeti stat line, and then has the battle cry of transforming a minion into a minion that costs one more. It's super insane. Like, just maybe even healing a minion, and then having the potential of getting something better. Like, you're almost always gonna get something better than we already have. And you cannot even use it on totems. This card is insane. Like if you have one minion on the board, this card is just insane. Chogal is a very interesting card. It it might not see play now, since it's pretty expensive. But I think it will see play in this rotation. I mean, until the next of uh, the next year and stuff. Until it gets taken out of the exp of the standard rotation, I think it will see play in some tournaments and stuff. It has potential. This is bad. Um, this card, I don't think is that good. Even for aggro decks, I don't think it's that good. This card, people compare it to Argent Squire. So like, with Knife Juggler, it's better than Squire. With PO, it's better than Squire. And uh, with Argos, it's worse than Squire. So overall, it's just a bit better than Squire. It might uh, see play in some really aggressive Warlock decks. Even though I'm not really sure how powerful these aggressive Warlock decks are gonna be. I'm gonna try to see if I can create a very, very aggro Warlock deck when uh, the expansion hits. So make sure to check that out. I'll share it with you guys. But it's probably gonna be very hard to build aggro in this meta when so many cards uh, from the aggro got nerfed really, really hard. Um, Tentacle... Okay, never mind. Uh... <laughs> This card is kind of like a shield maiden, but I don't think Warrior has that many cartoon cards. Correct me if I'm wrong. We'll see later. But if it does, if it has potential to be played uh, in cartoon decks, then it will see play because it's a pretty powerful card. But um, uh, I don't know if Warrior is the best to play cartoon on. Maybe Druid seems like the best for cartoon at the moment. But we'll see. Uh, deal one damage to all other minions. Eh. Probably won't see play. Um, Cthun, I think it's a very, 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 very interesting card. It's really good from Blizzard that they give it to all the players. And uh, it might encourage people to build Cthun decks. So expect a lot of this from the starting, uh, from the new players in the game. And they have the option of building a pretty strong deck. I think Blizzard wants Cthun decks to be like better than average, but not really good enough to decide competitive play. 
Because if like Cthulhu decks see competitive play, then he's like gonna be like just curve gains and who plays Cthulhu first usually wins. Unless he misses and his opponent just counter Cthulhu's. It's gonna be a pretty boring uh, environment, but maybe having one strong Cthulhu archetype for competitive play is not really bad. We'll see, but I like the design of the cards and I think it's fine. This is like the other RNG card, like the super RNG card, but I don't think it's gonna be that strong. Like it's very expensive and most of the time you will not get really good spells. You'll just get anti-synergetic spells that just make you waste a turn. But the situations where you're gonna have tons of value out of Yogg Saron are gonna be limited. And um, it might see playing some rogue Saron decks, but I hope not. I hope it's not gonna be seen in competitive play. I hope it's only for Cholden videos and that's pretty much it. This is weak, like super weak, compared to Va compared to Varian, and you'll realize how weak it is. Uh, weak, I think. Uh, this might not be that bad. It's definitely really, really good in wild, with Sludge Belcher and stuff, but didn't see that many Death Rattles in this set. It might see play this rotation if we get some other strong Death Rattle minions in the other expansions and uh, adventures. But at the moment, I don't think it will see play now. Again, it might see play in the future. Soviet is a card that many people discussed about. I don't think it's that good. It might be used from time to time as a tech card, or like you might see it in some tournament winning deck if the meta is like just perfect for it with nobody playing Black Knight. But if you get this card, Black Knight, you just lose the game instantly. It's not that strong. It's just good against Agro. So if Agro just rises again and becomes really, really strong then uh, this card might see plates. I'm on the edge. This card is a very well-balanced card. It's probably too fair to be good. Um, again, probably too fair to be good. This card is like one of the most interesting card designs. I think it's kind of the healthy RNG type. It's gonna see play in Reno decks, in my opinion. It's, it's gonna see play in the kind of decks that can afford to like just uh, wait with it in the hand until they can uh, milk it for value. A stable portal was unhealthy because it caused reductive the mana and it was also a spell that was uh, synergetic with uh, Sork Apprentice and Mana Worm. But Shifter is US, I think it's a very healthy card for the game and it's a very well designed card. So, looking forward to this one. This is a card that people were saying that is going to be good, but I don't think so. I think it's like way too slow. On turn 6, it's way too slow. This card brings Katoon. Not sure if it's good enough to see play. Like, would you play this as a one-off? Would you play it as a two-off? Like, playing it as a one-off doesn't really make that much of a difference if you draw Cthulhu or not. You probably just will not play this and just hope you draw Cthulhu. Like, I think the way Cthulhu decks will properly function is just drawing on curve and playing Cthulhu buff cards and then just top decking Cthulhu later on in the game and winning the game with Cthulhu. I don't think you'll be able to, like, play cards that, like, uh, seek Cthulhu, that is probably too slow for competitive play. It might see play in like uh, ladder and stuff. People will try to play it. I don't think this card is good. It's too slow again. Like imagine playing a Doomsayer on turn 5 without having a Frost Nova. Most of the time it dies. So then you just waste 5 mana for nothing. It's such a bad tempo swing. And if you're already ahead on board, you probably should win anyways. It's a very win more card. This card, five, five, a 5-5 five, a five, five is worth 4 mana usually. But uh, because it's bounce after one turn, I think it's way too slow for now. Maybe people will find out some interesting combos, but at the moment I don't think it will see play. Uh, give her Cthulhu, plus two, plus two, six mana, seven, six. Probably not good enough to see play in a Cthulhu deck. Not my type. This card is bad. This card is pretty bad, but it might see play Freeze Mage's OP, which might happen. Freeze Mage didn't really lose much, and they actually gained a lot. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. Okay. Mm. This card is very, very strong. Very strong. Uh, people discussed about it, and uh, I agree. It's a super strong card. A 4-2 Divine Shield for 4 mana that also buffs your Cthulhu. Definitely gonna see play in probably all the Cthulhu decks. Not sure if he's gonna see play outside Cthulhu decks. Bad. Okay. Eh. This card probably is not good enough to be played in Patron. 
seems too slow maybe in wild but it really seems too slow and that are the cards that were from the first thing the first cards and then we go for the second one let's refresh this page I'm not gonna talk about the card nerfs by the way uh, Life Coach covered them really well so go check his stream VOD I think it's also up on Reddit if you wanna see the card nerfs I agree with Life Coach on most of them and um, let's check this out let's check the cards from today it, it might not be from the same day when the video is published but it's I, I just saw them so it's gonna be like harder for me to evaluate them correctly but I'll give my best this card seems on the same power as the warrior card but a bit better um, not sure if Kutum Priest is the best thing to play Priest decks might see more play going for the dragon variants than going for the Kutun yeah, I think Dragon Priest will be better than Kutum Priest, that's my prediction. Um, again, another Kutum card. This is probably weak, way weaker than Valence Chosen. Way too expensive to make a powerful swing. Even without uh, Silence, uh, silence is, I don't think it's that good. Again, it might be okay, but probably not. Deal 5 damage to an undamaged character. Nah. If this is way better and more consistent, I don't really like this card. It's cool that you can use it on your opponent's face. This card is again super nuts. Like, you will play it in all the Kutun decks, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're gonna play it in all the Kutun decks unless the meta is super control heavy. And if it's super control heavy, then you're gonna just play like some greedy stuff for your Kutun. But I think this card will just help you get the board. Uh, 2 damage is really strong. It's just like kind of like the SI effect without having to combo it with anything. Just like turn 3 deal to damage. And then you have a bad body. 2-1 is worth 1 mana. But the 2 damage and the Kutun buff probably make it playable in like all the Kutun decks. Uh, discover a death rattle card. Uh, I'm not sure. Rogue doesn't really need this. It might see playing like a Miracle Rogue or a Yogg-Saron deck. But it just gives some extra cards and like maybe potential to draw. Not sure. I don't think Rogue Kutun decks are gonna be good enough to be played, but they had to get one Kutun card themselves. I don't think it will see play Rogue Kutun. You probably just play like Maligos or Miracle Rogue. Uh, Bladed Cultist doesn't really fit a Rogue archetype. Like a 1 1 or 2 3, yeah, of course, is really good, but doesn't really fit what Rogue wants to do usually. Again, I might be wrong on this one. Darshar Alchemist, restore 5 health. This card seems really good. So like, for 4-5, is you just compare it with Yeti. So you pay kind of 1 more mana, and you can heal any target for 5. It will probably see play, even in Dragon Priest, I think. Just having that upswing of uh, healing a damaged minion and then a trading again makes uh, the Priest deck so interesting. And uh, some extra heal is never bad. Then you just uh, don't need to run that much external heal. Getting two cards combined in one is always good. This card kind of gives you like a flash heal and a yeti. So definitely a really good card. And we'll see playing like the Bruiser Priest decks. Uh, Twilight Geomancer. Nah. No. You don't really you wanna end the game with Katoon, you don't really want to have it out. Um this card, on the other hand, is really good. I think this card is insane. So it's probably the best card out of the cards that uh, do something when Katoon is at uh, 10 attack. It basically just gives you two druids of the claws. Like druid of the claw, druid of the claw. That's it. <laughs> it has to be insane, right? So you'll probably play it in every Kutun deck to help you stall the game. Just make a big uh, beefy board. And it will just go well in Ram Druid. I really see Ram Kutun Druid being a thing. Just ramp up, play the good Kutun cards, and then just end the game with Kutun. Uh, Blood Seal Cultist, if you control a pirate, give your weapon plus one plus one. Stats are good, but Pirate Warrior... Not sure if it will really be a thing, but this card is pretty good. If Pirate Warrior will see play, this card is gonna be good. 
This card is bad. This card seems really good. It might be. Can it make Patron viable? Like, okay, without Dev's Bite, Patron loses a ton, but other decks also lose a ton. So if you can wait until turn 7 to make Patrons, it's just a better slam. If you manage to combine this with the Whirlwind, you'll still end up with 4 Patrons and a 2-1 Slime. And combine that with some weapons and keeping the board empty, I am not sure if Patron will see play, but this card kind of gives some hope if the meta goes really aggressive or slow, no, no, actually not really aggressive or slow. If the meta goes in a spot where they don't really run that many area of effect removals and Peyton just counters the meta decks, you might play it, but I'm not really sure. Like, Deathbite is massive. Deathbite is like a big hit. Not sure if this card is enough to make Patron good again, but it will make Patron good in wild for sure. I mean, better. Dealing one damage is really cool, and summoning a slime for that. Um, this card is pretty bad. Probably wants to play. <sighs> Blinktron, kind of, just for you. Stats are pretty bad for 7 mana. Keeping a random weapon. You need to value how much a random weapon is. Probably might see play in a warrior deck, since... You always need weapons, but usually you run all the good weapons anyways. I'm not sure if Warrior, if Warrior is going to be viable. I need to like, take a closer look at all the available cards. Bad. Pretty bad. Bad. This card is interesting, but I don't think it will see that much play. It's pretty slow. Like, what the choose... Like... Oh, I don't know, actually. Like... It's gonna give Druid of the Claw Taunt and Charge. That's gonna be interesting. Living Roots will deal 2 damage and make 1 ones. But at, what other choose 1 effects are you gonna have? Like Ancient of War, you probably... If this guy sticks that much, you probably already win the game. The stats are pretty bad. It's a big difference between 3 and 4 attack. It's an interesting design. The thing is that even if he doesn't see play now, it will definitely see more play in Wild. And it will definitely see more play the more choose one cards are available. So at some point it might see play. The Firebat card, the card that they made uh, to commemorate the uh, Firebat winning world championship is pretty cool actually. 1-1-2-1 one, one, one is okay. And then the effect is dealing 1 damage to a random enemy when it dies. So you can kind of compare it to the Toad that is 2 mana free too. This being a beast doesn't change it that much. It's pretty aggressive. It's probably a bit better than Lepernom because Lepernom got nerfed. It might see playing aggressive hunter, but I'm not sure how good aggressive hunter will be. I think if you wanna play hunter, you probably have to play the um, midrange hunter. Infested wolf seems like a really really powerful card. First of all, it synergizes with the hunter legendary, with this guy. It just play this on 4 and play this on 5, it might happen. Like, they will probably not want to kill this minion to give you the two spiders. You can compare this effect with the effect from the Haunted Creeper. So instead of having a 2 mana 1, 2, you have a 4 mana 3, 3. So you get plus 2, 1 of stats for 2 more mana and for that it's also a beast. But Haunted Creeper was like really strong. And um, this card is also pretty strong, I would say, stats wise. It's well distributed, it's also a beast. It also synergizes with the other thing. I think it's strong. It might see playing like um, Midrange Hunter. Like, the Midrange Hunter is just gonna have the game plan of surviving until turn 8 and they play the 8 mana um, Huffer, Call of the Wild card, and then they probably just take the game. This card is bad. Like, it's just like, compared it to Implosion, is like super bad, but Implosion is OP. I still think it's bad. You don't really want to play one mana for one one for a one one. It's overcosted. Um, carry on group. Also, you cannot combine it with Sea Giant. 
Because Sea Giant usually want to play it after all the 1 1s, and because this card spends all your mana, you have to play this card as the last card of the turn. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, is a 3 mana 2 5 beast good enough to be played because of the Houndmaster synergy? 2 5 is pretty bad in stats. Usually, you want like 3 4. 3 mana 3 4 beast, who does he play? How is it 2 5? It really depends how the meta fares, but after your Houndmaster is going to be a 4 7, which is pretty strong. Might see play, but I think Animal Companion is better. You might play one of those and two companions in the deck. Then you like play maybe you probably play Juggler and Unleash too because you, you want the synergy. The, you probably play one or two Unleash according to how many uh, tokens your opponent are playing in the meta game. So I really think Midrange Hunter will see play in a way. People will find out some builds that are gonna be really really strong. You just need to survive until turn eight. You can compare this card to like the other 2 mana Murloc that summons a 1-1 one, one. But this was summons a 1-1 one, one with a town, so it's kind of like um, Power creep People should complain already about this Kappa um, nah, Not really the strong Pretty weak bodies for 2 mana, you want better And it's not really as sustainable as Creeper Like Creeper is annoying because it's a 1-2 and then it spawns 2 on ones. This one just has a 1-1 one, one with a town, eh, probably not good enough uh, did one damage someone a 1-1 one, one. It's kind of like Elven Archer but the spell If the Mastiff is just a 1-1 one, one, it's just Elven Archer right? But it's a spell So it's bad Um, I mean it might be a beast but then it's still bad uh, this card is pretty bad like it's just a 2 mana 3 2 You discard the card when you play it and then you draw it back so it's just a 2 mana 3 2 overall. It's even worse than a 2 mana 3 2 because you only break even after it dies. And the only way you can get an advantage out of this is by getting an advantage from the card you discard. So you need to discard Pact of Jaraxxus for this to be efficient. So if Succubus doesn't see play, I doubt this will see play. Zealous Initiate. Give a random friendly minion, plus one, plus one. Seems slow. For one mana, nah, pretty bad. Uh, also pretty bad and expensive. I don't know. I don't think you really want to play this. It's more efficient to play the one mana one. This one is really good if it stays, but it will probably die easy. Like, on three mana you already have Ingang Boss, which is like a 2-4 that just spawns a lot of one ones, and that's a really annoying card. That Zoo has and Warlock has overall. I don't think this card is that good. It's too slow to become good. Probably once you play. Psychotron. This card looks really good. If it was 3 5, it would be just a better Belcher. At 3 4, it's probably still on the level of Belcher, I would say. I would go as far as saying it that it's on the level of Belcher. Is that too much? I think this card is sick. It's so cool that. It has a guitar, it might just, uh, I made a tweet about it, I hope like when you play the card it starts singing uh, from Nirvana, it smells like Teen Spirit, hello, 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 how low, okay, never mind, also a Nirvana song, <laughs> uh, the reference game is on point, uh, <laughs> it's a really good card I think, you might see playing Contra Warriors and just defensive decks overall, right? Divine Shield is really powerful on free attack. But yeah. Cyclopanian Horror. I don't really think this card is that good. It might be a better Senjin, but it's on par with Senjin when they have two minions. Doesn't really seem attractive. This card, on the other hand, is pretty broken. 7-7 Seven -seven is like really, really strong now with BJH costing 5 mana. Overload 2 you don't really care, it actually helps your trog. The only disadvantage is that you don't really want to overload your turn 5 because on turn 5 you play Doomhammer. But who needs Doomhammer when you have such a powerful beater? Like... Shaman was probably not the class that needed this kind of powerful card. I don't know what Blizzard wants to do with Shaman, but this seems bonkers. Definitely will see playing Agro Shaman, not sure if he's... It, it'll probably not see playing the Midrin Shaman. Or control shaman or whatever shaman people come up with. This card is probably it is four. It's this is because of the spell power, but eh, probably not not that good. 
bad. Uh, pretty bad, right? This card is nuts. Transform all your minions into random minions that cost one more. Holy shit. Again, another powerful shaman card. Like, if you have two minions already, you get value. Plus, you can heal them. Plus, works on totems. It's a card to snowball. Not sure if it will see that much play, but it's OP if you have a board. This card is an alternative to... I forgot the name of the card that, that Shaman had that cut your overload. Like, so many Shaman decks recently stopped playing um, Ancestral Knowledge because it was overloading you too much. Because they didn't also want to play the other card, but now you might just play full overload again because of this card. Because, like, the spell that un-overloads you was not really that good. A 2 mana free 2 breaks even and then un-overloads you. Might see playing, like, aggressive shaman. So, again, that's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see more cards for aggressive shaman. It already has enough to be powerful. But, yeah. The thing is, I will talk about this like, afterwards, actually. Ah, uh, bad, 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 huh? Weird and bad, I mean. It's too slow. Like, it will probably not stick. Compared to the Paladin card, this card is like way worse. If it was a 3-3, free -free, it would probably see some play. Bad, bad, uh, discover a minion. Mm, it might, nah, it's pretty bad. I don't know, like, you, it's hard to evaluate. You draw a minion, but you select what minion you draw. You get nothing on the board, but the minion gets buffed, so it's a very slow card. Probably won't see that much play. Recast a spell. I don't know, seems okay -ish. But probably don't want to play Mage Katoon deck, so whatever. Um... Too expensive for what it does. This card is really strong, right? You just... As a draw, you want to dagger up on turn 2. And then you just follow up on turn 4 with this guy. Just gives you a deadly poison, kind of. Yeah, it just gives you a deadly poison. So then you pay like 3 mana for a 4-4. Four, four. But it will have a lot of uh, contest on the spot. Like, you might not be able to play it because Tomb Pillager and Bio Teacher are just better. But... It's a very strong card. Hmm. Again, you don't really want to play Kutfun Warlock. They probably just give them these mage and warlock cards just to have them because they want every class to have Kutun cards, I guess. But the Dru Druid is the main contender for Kutun, I think. Bad, bad. Too slow. It's when it dies. Like, they, they will usually just kill your other minions and kill this last to neutralize the value. And the 2-1 is very bad for one. Yeah, probably bad. Uh, too slow? Yeah, too slow. Hmm, interesting. Too low costed for what it does. If it was like a 4-4, four -four, it would be interesting. At, even at 3-4, probably wouldn't see play. It's also legendary. They could have easily made the 4-4. But then people would... Actually, it's, it's actually better that they made it as a 2-4. Because if they made the 4-4, people would actually play this. And then games would like rely on like RNG. So yeah, it's good. RNG card is not being good. Uh, it's pretty wacky. For 4 health is in the zone where it's uh, Glass Cannon. Like, compare it to Tomb Pillager. Tomb Pillager is already at 5 attack. So... It's usually better because it also gives you the coin. So, yes, this is bad. Bad, bad. Uh, it has pretty decent stats, but... Very low health. 1 health is like a very bad zone. I see a lot of minions in this expansion with 1 health. Um, this is probably too bad and bad too. So this is this seems to be all the cards. I might have missed some, but okay. Uh, I'll just give you like my overall feel of how the meta game is gonna look like, including the nerfs. People talked about the nerfs already. I agree with most of what they said. Just watch what Life Coach said. Uh, if you wanna see, I feel like the same. 
Okay, so in the first look at the cards, Shaman seems to be the most busted class to play in competitive play. But you have to keep in mind that they might they might have some counters. Like for example, Freeze Mage is also really really good. I'm not sure how good Freeze Mage is gonna be against Shaman, but for example. I might see some Control Warrior seeing play if people manage to make a defensive Control Warrior build that uh, manages to sustain itself. Um, if people man manage to make like a Tempo Mage or a Zudek that manages to beat Shaman. It's very hard to like predict how the meta game overall is gonna look like. We have to like play with the actual cards to see. And we have to see how the meta game looks like. It's very hard to predict in a vacuum what's gonna be good. But Rogue looks strong. Hunter looks strong, Shaman looks strong, Priest looks strong, Mage looks strong. Warrior seems weak, but Warrior always manages to find a way after the meta settles to like counter the people. That's what Contra Warrior usually does. They are sneaky. Druid seems to have Cthune. Druid seems to be the archetype to play Cthune. Or just simply normal ramp. Or maybe... If people manage to find a viable build, I didn't really check how many cards they have to build a deck. Just like a double Savage Roar deck, like a Agro Druid with Savage Roars and stuff. Um, what are the other classes? Paladin? I'm not really sure if they have enough tools to build Control Paladin, but they have the Ragnaros guy. Control Paladin might be a thing, and if it is a thing, then we're gonna have a Control meta. Uh, people, keep in mind guys that people are always going to try to like find the aggro decks and the aggro decks usually are really good in Hearthstone. So I expect a good mix of like dragon decks. I think dragon priest, dragon warlock are going to be pretty good. Warlock is going to be played mostly in Reno I think. Reno is going to be nice I assume. So Reno is going to be nice. Dragon, um, Mali Lock is going to be nice. Mali Rogue is going to be nice. Normal Rogue is going to be nice. Tempo Mage has potential to be nice. Freeze Mage has potential to be nice. Almost every single class seems to have potential to be played in standard. So it all comes down to like how the meta game is gonna look like. As it seems right now, Shaman looks the strongest on paper and will probably dictate how the meta game goes. So anything can happen according to how Shaman dictates the meta game. It's definitely gonna be a really good change for Hearthstone. And uh, I think it's gonna take it to a new level. The only two or three, there are like only two or three cards that might see, uh, that might see, but that might be problematic RNG wise. Overall, I think it's a very good expansion, like powerful cards, interesting tech choices, and very little impactful and game deciding RNG, like unhealthy RNG. It's more like fun RNG. I think Whispers of the Old Gods is like, maybe the best thing that happened to Hearthstone. I know for sure that until now, League of Explorers is the best thing that happened to Hearthstone. Like, people still watch Hearthstone tournaments and Hearthstone streams after the game has not been changed for like five or six months, which is like insane. And compare it to how people complained after the Grand Tournament hit and that was a pretty big mess and a big, a big fail. Uh, League of Explorers was a really good expansion and this seems kind of like League of Explorers, but at a bigger scale which will probably make the game fresh and nice for a good long time. Hopefully not more than like three months. I expect like some other expansions and stuff soon. But um, I think people are going to start organizing more tournaments. People are going to watch more Hearthstone. People are going to play more Hearthstone. And Hearthstone will probably become a way better esports. I expect uh, the boom of Hearthstone esports and the Hearthstone esports here to start once Whispers of the Old Gods hits. Also, keep in mind, we have a DreamHack starting in the early of the next month. In less than two weeks, we have a DreamHack. And in less than a month, we have regionals. So, already important esports events. I'll be attending regionals. I will not be attending this DreamHack, but I will be attending all the DreamHacks in Europe. So, if you enjoyed the content, follow me. Follow G2 Esports. And uh, that's it, guys. See you some other time. Thank you for watching.